And a very warm greetings to all of you. It is also only by the grace of God that he allows me to stand before you this morning. <laughs> With praises and glory to his name, I am here with much prayers and God's kindness. It's a pleasure to be home with you all. <laughs> Let me just collect my thoughts. Okay. Today is the second day I have gone in public. The first day was Saturday when we had a, like a send or picnic for babes Lipasana. And I'm getting free now. <laughs> okay, kidding aside, I'm very grateful for God's mercy, his goodness, his kindness, his provision, his provi provisions and preservation of all his people, especially as we went through this coronavirus pandemic that we are still experiencing. But thank the Lord, there is light behind the darkness. And praise his name. Again, I want to send my condolences to the family members of our church who lost their loved ones. And though embraces to those who fully recovered when they contracted the virus and are fully recovered, and also those who have other illnesses and sickness. On April 13th, Ruby called me and invited me to speak to you today. And I told her, why me? There are many younger women in church. Cherry Tumbokon, <laughs> Batman Lapig. I could name a few, but why me? But Pastor Jerry, I'm humbled, but greatly honored. And also, Pastor Jerry affirmed that call, and I asked him the same question. And I told Pastor Jerry, I didn't know BCI have a new platform for absences. If you had been out for one year and a half like me, you better watch out. You will stand here. <laughs> and so here I am. And I will begin now. Abraham Lincoln once said, No one is poor if you have a godly mother. And he continued on to say that the prayer, he remembers the prayers of his mother, which followed him all his life. He clung to it, and he said that all that I am and hope to be, I owe it to my mother. Don't reflect on these words and just remember your mother, my mother, all our mothers had been praying for us. What a privilege we have. And now, I will begin by asking you these questions. Oh, no, I forgot. I have to start with another one. Congress declared, before I continue, Congress declared the second Monday of May to be Mother's Day. And President Woodrow Wilson stated in May 9, 1934, said that this day is set aside as a time, precious time to honor and reverence and celebrate all mothers of our country. Then, today is a special day. And I begin with asking you these questions. Who is a mother? A mother who cleans up your mess? 
a woman who has born a child? Is she a caregiver or a listener or a friend or a tutor? Or is she a financier and also a counselor or a mentor? If you are a mother, which one of these are you? Or are you all of these to your children? Actually, a mother or all of these rolled into one and much more. She is a woman chosen by God for this privilege of motherhood. No one can match the sacrificial love a mother gives to all her children, which she plays all throughout her life until she dies. A mother's love is one of the purest emotion that ever existed in this universe. She nurtures her children through their growth and development, and her aspirations before she became a mother was put aside because when her children came and born, she just had to nurture them and develop them to achieve their goals and aspirations on life. Mother plays a vital role in the shaping up of her children and for what her children to become a um, productive and better citizens of the country and also honorable Christians. A mother becomes a role model for her children to become their mother themselves him, as they watch her raising them up. A mother feel, fulfills so many roles each and every day as her children grow up. And mother deserves at least one a day in a year to be celebrated and be honored. On Mother's Day, we also remember those aunts who nurtured and cared for their nephews and nieces. We also are those adopt, adoptive mother and those mother who mothers foster kids. The most precious memories of my mom was Run, running to her, hugging her, kissing her after a playful day with my friends, sitting on her lap to be comforted. And I will hear her reading her Bible aloud. I wonder why old people read aloud. <laughs> and that's what she does, sitting on our rocking chair on our porch, reading her Bible aloud. But don't you worry. She remembers my activity in church, and she will yell my, me and tell me, go to church for your activities. Our church is just one, uh, eight houses away. Okay. And I remember the visits that we have for our relatives and friends. Those are precious memories because we ride the horse-drawn carriage, which we call Kalesa. And I become a social person like her. And then she wants me always to be by her side when she's cooking. She wants me to be a cook when I grow up. But the only difference between my mom back then and me, she doesn't cook healthy. <laughs> I could see a big lump of pork put in a pot and extract the oil. You remember that? And then that's all, that oil is what she uses to cook everything. There's no, there's no olive oil in the Philippines or canola oil. Could you imagine the cholesterol that had run down? <laughs> and that's my mother. How about you, mothers? You most likely learned to become a mother that you are now as you watch your mother, her example, growing up. What are your precious memories of your mother? How did your mother influence you growing up? 
How are you influencing your children? Paul wrote, Apostle Paul wrote in uh, Timothy chapter, Second Timothy verse, uh, chapter one verse five, addressing to Timothy, he said, "For I am mindful of the sincere faith within you, which first dwelt with your grandmother Lois, and also with your mother Eunice, and I am sure." that it is as well with you. How about memories of raising your children? Remember the tiny infant you were holding in your hand, kissing, hugging, oh, those are precious memories. But then do you remember carrying and dancing a colicky child at the middle of the night? There seemed to be no end in his crying at the middle of the night. This is for those who wanted to be mothers to be. There are times like this. And how was it with you when you were just a new mother? And then, remember, children grow up at different stages. And here comes the terrible two. You remember the child full of energy? always climbing on your chairs, going up and down the steps. And then, alas, he found your kitchen cabinet, putting out all the pots and pans, laying it down on the floor. What a big mess. This child is like a powerhouse of energy. Then comes the formative years of ages four to nine. See, I know this all by experience, and I taught child care in high school. So these are, were our lessons, right? They quickly learn everything. They absorb so many things that you mention and they see. They are like chatterboxes in the house, naming objects around them. This is the time they memorize children's songs in Sunday school, and then this is the time they will they know the table of addition, table of subtraction. I don't know if they do it now because they have adding machines. <laughs> now, this uh, make mom busier because this is the time you have play dates, right? And also, that child grew up and became a preteen or a teenager's challenging years for both mothers and children. Sometimes you see them walking like zombie in your house. They are very moody, addressing the teenagers, okay? <laughs> they want to be alone in their room. And if you go inside their rooms, you will see all the dirty clothes and the clean clothes on the floor. What a mess, but don't be surprised. If they're looking for something, they could find it. <laughs> Isn't that true? I don't know if you have a teenager like that. I had one. They are very conscious of their appearance. This is the time of peer pressure. They like, they like to be like their friends. This is the, uh, a feeling of sense of belonging they want. They want their friends, they don't want their mama. And you know this time, when you regularly get a peck on your cheek when you drop them home in school, they will turn around and see if there is somebody looking around because they don't want to be called mama's boy or mama's girl. At this time, parents should be supportive very patiently, uh, loving these teenagers because they themselves do not understand why they are acting like that. Remember when you address them, they look at you with rolling eyes and sometimes disrespectfully turn their back and then walk away. But at this time, mothers should be supportive and kind and be patient. By this time, Mom becomes an Uber driver, taking them to baseball practice, 
swimming lessons, you name it, you went through it, okay? It's just an, a, a lot more um, job for mothers. And thank God that women could handle it. Don't you think so? You got, juggle with all the things that you have to do. Fathers don't do that. <laughs> they just focus on one. They could not juggle all these things. That's why you became a mother. <laughs> and now, <laughs> this time for slumber parties and hanging out with friends. Now you become friends with the mother of your child because you always chat and said, where are they? How come they haven't come home? I don't know if you experienced that. I have four girls. I experienced that. A mother continues to guide her young adult children in discovering their gifts and encouraging them to develop and achieve their career goals, directing them to a successful life. As adult children living on their own, mother continues to love them while respecting their privacy. They want to have their own place. My granddaughter just moved into a new apartment in Williamsburg. Do you know how much is the rent? Thousands, right? Bigger than our mortgage payment. But they want to be independent, right? And, and usually at this time, when they are paying rent, sometimes and most of the time they run out of money. Even if you list down what they owe you, you never be paid. <laughs> I am telling you that's a fact. Okay, as adult children, um, mother continuously love them and support them. But the greatest reward of motherhood is grandchildren. You see, Pastor Jerry and Tess have to drive how many miles? You get crazy. Now your shopping list includes, watch up, roll down, don't laugh. Time will come. <laughs> you have now children's shoes, children's uh, books, you name it, and they get more expensive as they become game stop. Are you familiar with game stop? But grandparents don't mind it because they love to enjoy, enjoy and spoil their grandchildren. Hugs and kisses are just enough. <laughs> so how do we, what do we do now as a follower of Jesus Christ? Proverbs 22 verse 6 tells us that we have to train the child in the way he should go. For even when he is old, he will not depart from it. So how do we do that? We have to get good, set good examples as a child of God, teaching them how to pray at a young age, reading, reading them Bible stories, and also encouraging them to walk with God and leading them to a personal relationship with the Lord. BCI children are blessed to have programs like that, teaching them to love and the Lord and learn the word of God. We are blessed to have the ministry of the children who grew up here. I remember they were just running around. Look at Pastor AJ and Rio. I attended first birthday celebration, dedication of children. Now they are young adults. And God bless them because God are using them in their ministry. And we see them like the Cachuelas, the Manlapigs, the Alvarans, and many more. May I, be, I forgot to mention. And then there are those that are not very visible. Who they are helping in Sunday school classes, in the youth activities. Or, and I could mention one, uh, like Renzo here, singing in the praise team. 
And also, uh, Nate and Dukila, who are taking videos most of the time. But, oh my lord, I lost my place. I'm sorry. <laughs> I'm not high tech. Thank the Lord for this. Oh my goodness. E. Okay. But they are serving, and there are also who are, who are serving in different ministries outside the church, like Mary Ann Tibayan, Abby Tibayan, also Pastor James Lepasana, who is now at the city chapel in New York. That's what Pastor Jerry shared to me. And also uh, Ruth Ann, assisting he, her brother, and also, I think, Ian and Vanya. God bless them in their ministry. And I, want, I don't like to forget Pastor A.J. Kamota, who is now in Southern New York. I remember I used to ch chase <laughs> A.J. He was going to burn our building in <laughs> Garfield. <laughs> That's the Flores family. <laughs> and then... Annually, our youth pastors take our preteens and teenagers to summer camps. And they have wonderful days, uh, those four days that they stay there. And there are children who love to stay the whole summer in uh, Christian camps. I remember my two daughters love uh, Christian camps, and we drive them to New Hampshire, the camp is called Camp Spafford. It was started by the Scottish Christian back then. It's a beautiful camp. And one of my daughter wanted to stay the whole summer. So she stayed. At that night, I received a call from her telling me she didn't like the job she got as a staff, cleaning toilets. I don't blame her. But she called me the following morning and said, Ma, it's okay. Because cleaning toilet is only twice a day. But if I work in the dining room or the kitchen, I start early and three times a day. Those are good experiences for children, especially working for the first time. In the camp, they learn good Christian work ethics, and they are being mentored by adults. Christians. And you don't have to worry about that summer because those teenagers are in camp, right? And so, as a mother, we should also know how God's word from Deuteronomy chapter 6, verse 6 to 7, which admonishes us. And these words that I command you today shall be on your heart you shall teach them diligently to your children and shall talk of them when you are at home in your house and when you walk by the way and when you lie down and when you rise. And Warren Worsby stated in his book entitled Be Complete, he said, he wrote a commentary on the book of Colossians that says, children has a right to be born and also a right to be born into a dedicated Christian home where they will be raised and nurtured in, and they will be nurtured and admonished in the word of God. They have the right to have holy parents who will teach them the word of God and discipline them with love. Mothers are creating memories in the life of children growing up. And we have to be thankful that we are in the East Coast, where there are many places where you could bring your children just a few hours' drive. You go to Manhattan. There are the museum, historical. Don't you enjoy going there and children raising the history of our country? There is a museum of modern art. Name them a few. And also, watching Broadway show especially opera, but I didn't know I watched an op opera before I could not understand. <laughs> My daughter told me, Ma, you have to read a story because sometimes you cannot follow up. 
minutes. So that's one guide, right? And so if you drive three hours away, Washington, D.C. has riches historical places that you could venture. And one advice I could leave you is, if you want to go to Washington, D.C., you could just take the train, and at the train station in Washington, D.C., take the Old Town Trolley. That's the best to see Washington. You don't have to worry about parking. The trolley will bring you to the corner of the historical buildings, and it's a um, guided tour. It goes all the way to Georgetown and to the cathedral, the Smithsonian you had to spend. Imagine if a boy or a girl goes to Smithsonian, the kid will saw the possibility of what they could do. Don't you think so? You could go to Liberty Science in Jersey City. It's all hands-on. The children learn because in their growing years, they accumulate so many things in their mind. Adult children living on their own, mother also ensures she has food containers. Why? Because if your children come for a visit, you want to pack food for them, right? Take home. I remember one day, I cooked dinner and I called my daughter who lives in town. And she answered me, oh, Ma, thank you. I'm not cooking dinner. And then she threw back to me three questions. Is it delivery? Or is it pickup? <laughs> or is it eating by your dining window? Those things you remember as long as you live. You cherish their memories. Okay? And then as mother of five children, I have this advice to mothers. Respect the privacy of your young adults. Set boundaries for yourself as a mother. No meddling. If you say a word once, don't repeat because then you are nagging. <laughs> That's why I tell you, right? Keep advice if your counsel is sought. And then when they're married, before you ask permission from your daughter or son, you better talk to the in-laws for better relationship. I remember my two grand, my two son-in-laws, they always tell me, I am such a good mother-in-law. I don't know how. And then <laughs> my daughter-in-law will always tell me, Nay, you are my role mother. And I guess, how? But I guess they see it in the way you carry yourself as a mother. Can you think of mothers mentioned in the Bible whose character we could emulate as a mother? How about Jacobed, the mother of Moses, her sacrificial love for her son? How about Hannah, the mother of Samuel, how she dedicated her son to the Lord and the Lord honored her request by using him in the ministry. Now comes the passion of my life. You know, I am a healthy freak in BCI. As a mother, you have an important role of making meals to your children. I did not mention I, as in my job as educator, nutrition educator in Jersey City for five years, I work for the food service. Food service handles the school lunch program of the school, and I go around training cafeteria cooks into healthy cooking. And then because it was mandate, mandated by the Department of Agriculture, my food service director, my boss, I gave, uh, told me to go to Richwood High School. And Elizabeth High School, I trained and I give workshop to the district food service director about healthy cooking. That was in 1993. 
because it's mandated by the Department of Agriculture. And today, people everywhere are more aware than before about the importance of maintaining healthy lifestyle. In addition to regular exercise, it includes eating and selecting healthy foods. We say, I could tell you, food is a friend because God created it like natural food or healing foods, but it could be a foe. If you chose those foods that are not good, it will lead to chronic inflammation, chronic illness, heart disease, and also other, other um, disease that will bother you, especially when you reach my age. I'm telling you, you think you are not getting old? When you reach age 40, it starts. How, you, how could you tell that? Remember, you were reading, you had to put it close or put it far because you are losing sight. I'm just waking you up. And women, especially Asian women, at the age of 30, we start to lose bones. And one way you lose bones fast is when you reach menopause. And men do not care about bones, but you see old men drooping like this when they get old, right? So you be aware of it too, okay? So with the chronic diseases that we have, I don't want you to suffer from it. I just praise the Lord that he gave me a desire for a healthy lifestyle. At my age, I don't spend money on prescription. I'm telling you, it works. That's why I keep on telling you, it works. So you could enjoy your golden years. And exercise, I've been telling everybody, the ones I chat, less listen soon. It's like, a, you know, when you go to the gym, private trainer, you pay for it. You go to a new ba uh, YouTube box, there is less listen soon with different, different power walks. I do that every day. So it makes you limber, right? Also, when you move, blood continues to flow in your brain and all over your body. Now, I told you, God told us in the Bible, this is only one body we will have, and it is his temple. So we have to keep it clean. Remember, it is wise to eat, to make white choices with the food that you prepare for your family. Plant-based food is a smart choice. And I have some guidelines. May you, you like to, to read, to follow, or whatever. Fish, number one. Provide healthy, good fats. I did not say beef or pork. It says fish. Okay. What does fish do? They are friendly to your hearts, such as two fishes I eat and also three. Wild-caught mackerel and wild, wild caught salmon. Why? Because they are fatty fish, they are rich in omega-3, and they are very low in mercury. And sardines, they are cheap. You go to Costco, you buy a pack. You put it in your spinach salad. You boil beans, chickpeas, white beans, black beans. Add it to it, you have a healthy salad with plant-based protein. Okay, not patatim, <laughs> not kare kare. They taste good. You know who is your enemy? Your tongue. You have to remember, your tongue adjusts to a new flavor in 28 days. So be patient. Give it time. You're eating white rice now. Tomorrow I tell you change to brown rice. You will not like it because your tongue will not like the flavor, okay? Now, the next one is sardines are packed with bones, which are good source of calcium. Number two, less serving of beef, especially barbecue time is coming. <laughs> Please, don't burn your uh, beef or anything that you barbecue. 
because they, beca they uh, are carcinogenic, cancer-causing, okay? Then it says, less serving with lower your cholesterol. Then it says, high fiber food from complex carbohydrates. What's the meaning of complex? That means it is in the natural form, not processed. Rice is highly processed. I remember I called Freddie one time, and then I asked him how he is, and he said, Mabuti pa kayo, wala kayong problema. And then I said, that's what I have been telling everybody. Don't eat white rice. It's highly processed. And then I said to him, we process the rice, we get the darak, we give it to the pigs. Then he told me, I eat white rice, but I eat pork chop. <laughs> so that's the justification. You will never win. Then, high fiber food of complex carbohydrates, not high processed carbohydrates, and many um, people are using white flour. White flour has gluten that causes inflammation. Maybe it will not appear right away, but over time. That's why you have heard of gluten-free cake, right? And that's the best choice. I cook, I bake bread using almond flour, um, um, amaranth flour, all the flours that are whole grain. Then, fruits and vegetables. Okay, I have a guy that I follow. It's G-B-O-M-D. What are the vegetables good for you? Greens, beans, and then the onion family, the garlic. And then the mushroom, always eat mushroom a day. You know what I do with the mushroom? I freeze them because they are very healthy. And also seeds, a lot of seeds, okay? Um, people sometimes are concerned about seeds because they have something in their gut. But that's not true. The doctor said that if you have that thing, I forgot the word. It is not, it is not the seeds that got tangled in there. It is the poop, the dirt that you have gotten in your body. Oh my goodness, I lost again, sorry. I'm almost coming to the end. And this is with the permission of the, the pastor. I asked him if I could. Don't blame me. <laughs> okay, foods that are a good source of calcium <laughs> and vitamin D. Sorry, Pastor. <laughs> to provide the right stuff for your bones. And then foods rich in carotene. Okay, one food I could tell you the difference. Sweet potato is a better choice than white potato because sweet potato is rich in carotene. I have these flyers that I just received, and it says good source of potassium, and you just toast it and bake it. I don't know if you eat French fries. Watch out for French fries. It's not because of the white potato. You know, the food industry is there because they want to make money. They do not use olive oil to fry your French fries. They use shortening which is trans fat why shortening it has the high smoking point you could uh, hit the oil it will not burn but it is cheap shortening if you go to those places where they have french fries you will see huge cans of shortening so I just want you to be aware of that okay mangoes are in season Half a cup of mango will give you a lot of vitamin C. Okay, the 10 superfoods that are healthy. Okay, Greek yogurt, plain. Not in those small containers with fruits because they have sugar, okay? Then broccoli, salmon, oatmeal is good. I know you eat them, garbanzos, watermelon butternut squash, and leafy greens. These are the good 
daily food for your health. I'm not going over it one by one because you might fall asleep. Okay, now we go to, I'm almost there. Avoid too much sugar. Oh, here's another one. In traditionally, when there is a birthday, we buy birthday cakes, right? And I could see the birthday cake that is being passed around here is the huge Costco cake. They have a lot of frosting and they don't taste good anyway. Okay. Why put that in your body, right? And then it leads to tooth decay and also diabetes. You know, I had been in this country since 1970. I have not seen so many dialysis centers as of now. So many. Why? Because of too much sugar in the diet. It is the fault of the FDA that allow sugar to be used as an ingredient, okay? Especially at this time, weather is getting warm. You go to Starbucks for that beverage that you long for. Do you know how much calories you will be taking in? Thousands. That is only from one beverage. And the cola. Do you know how much sugar in a can? 16 teaspoons plus the food coloring and plus all those that they put in there. If you drink alcohol, do it in moderation or totally avoid it. Avoid highly processed foods which are depleted of natural nutrients. When I go grocery shop, I just go around the perimeter of the store. If you go to the middle aisles, there are highly processed food and canned foods, okay? So, in closing, I know you're happy. <laughs> I want to share with you Proverbs 31, verses 26 to 29, which reads, She speaks with wisdom, and faithful instructions are on her tongue. She watches over her household and does not eat the bread of idleness. Her children arise and bless her, call her blessed, and her husband also, and he praises her. Many women do noble things, but you so pass them all. I encourage all mothers to be the kind of mothers these verses describe. And I encourage you, mother, to enjoy your day have a wonderful celebration of you. You are blessed, chosen by God. And happy Mother's Day to everybody. Thank you for listening. God bless you all. And thank you.